Welcome to an episode of the Sonoran Woodshop. Today we're going to be making this snowman. The base of the snowman is made of soft maple, the hat is made of walnut, the buttons, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, as well as the band around the hat are all inlaid using milliput, which is a two-part epoxy putty, and then we've got this nice decorative scarf. So let me take you through the process of making this. I begin by turning a maple blank that is two inches square by three and three quarters of an inch in length using a spindle roughing gouge. The layout of our snowman starts by measuring in one half inch from one end of the blank. From this mark, I measure in one and five eighths of an inch, which defines the body of the snowman. From this line, we measure in an inch and a quarter to define the head of the snowman. The ends of the blank or the waist areas are turned down to roughly an inch in diameter. This measurement doesn't need to be exact, so there's no need for calipers. Since the head of the snowman is smaller than the body, we turn this section down to an inch and a half in diameter. The skew chisel is used to quickly remove the material. The center points for the head and body are defined for reference. I begin shaping the snowman by rounding the corners first, leaving a flat section across the center lines. A skew chisel is used to create a definitive line between the body of the snowman and the head. Once the corners are rounded, I begin working back to the center lines. This seems to help create a more uniform sphere. Keep in mind that we are only creating a rough shape for our snowman at this point. With the snowman roughly shaped, it's time to lay out the buttons and face. Determine the front of your snowman and draw a center line along its length. To lay out the buttons on the body section, we measure down one half inch and up one half inch from the center mark. To lay out the eyes, I make a mark at one quarter inch on either side of the center point. Extend these lines up towards the top of the head. From the center line, I measure up one eighth of an inch, which marks the center point for the eyes. I extend the center line of the eyes down to provide a reference mark when drawing the mouth. The mouth is drawn freehand using the reference marks. Using a set of dividers, I create starter holes for a brad point drill bit to register on, which ensures my holes are drilled precisely. The buttons and eyes are drilled using a 3 16 drill bit. The nose and mouth are drilled using a 3 32 inch drill bit. Milliput is a two-part, non-shrinking epoxy putty that can be turned on the lathe once it sets. Equal parts are mixed to start the reaction which causes it to harden. I find that squishing it flat and folding it on itself works well to ensure the two parts are sufficiently mixed. I like to roll the putty into thin sticks which makes it easier to fill the holes. Continue this process until all the holes are filled. I allow the putty to harden overnight, then remount the snowman between centers and begin turning until the excess milliput is removed. At this point, we can turn the snowman into its final shape. My goal here is to just clean up the surface. I've run through the sanding grits up to 320. A clear finish is ideal for a project like this if you're using a light colored wood like maple. 
For this project, I'm using Sheila Wax Liquid Friction Polish. I'll leave a link in the description below. To part off the bottom, I pick a spot below the bottom button and make a reference mark. As I part off the bottom, I undercut the bottom of the snowman using the parting tool to create a concave surface. This will allow the snowman to sit flat on a tabletop surface. I'm getting ready to cut the top of the snowman off and prepare it for its hat. If we look at the side profile of our snowman here, you can actually see that the hat is actually tilted towards the back of his head. Now that angle is actually built into our snowman. Since the head of the snowman has a smaller diameter than its base, when we lay this on a flat surface, it actually tilts the snowman in one direction and creates the angle that we need when we run it across our bandsaw blade. Now to achieve the look of the hat tilting backwards, the face of the snowman needs to be pointed down towards the tabletop. This cut is made about an eighth of an inch above the eyes. Caution is used to ensure my fingers stay away from the blade. I remove the bandsaw marks using sandpaper on a flat surface. Using my finger as a stop on my pencil, I create lines that are equal distance from the edge of the head here. And I just create several lines here and I keep working myself around. And that point right there is going to be my center. Using my dividers, I mark a starter hole for the drill bit. Using a half inch drill bit, drill a half inch deep hole perpendicular to the top of the head. For the top hat, I start with a two inch square blank that is at least two and three quarters of an inch in length. From one end of the blank, I make a mark about a half inch in from the end. This marks the top of the hat. From this mark, I measure down an inch and an eighth to the top of the brim. Another mark is made at an inch and three eighths for the bottom of the brim. The final mark is for the tenon at one and three quarters of an inch. The waist above the top of the hat is turned down to about an inch. The tenon is also turned down to about an inch. I make a reference cut at the top of the hat at an inch and a half. The second reference cut is made just above the brim at an inch and an eighth. The top of the hat is turned to connect the two reference cuts. I round the top of the brim to make it appear like it's slightly drooping. The tenon above the hat is turned down to about a half an inch. The exact size is not critical here. The hat is then parted off just below the bottom tenon. The tenon at the bottom of the hat will be used to attach it to the snowman. If you recall, I drilled a half inch wide hole in the top of the snowman, so I need to turn this tenon down to a half inch. I use the hole in the snowman as a guide until I get a nice snug fit. The bottom of the brim is cupped out which adds to the drooping look and allows the hat to sit flush with the snowman. I flip the hat around and remove the tenon from the top of the hat. At this point I start refining the shape by adding a slight convex shape to the top. The brim is refined until I'm happy with the thickness and proportions. To add a decorative band above the brim of the hat, I cut a groove that will be filled with milliput. I roll out the milliput, wrap it around the hat, and press it into the groove. After the milliput dries and hardens overnight, I mount the hat back into the chuck and finish shaping it. I sand the hat up to 320 grit. Sheila wax is added and the hat is finished. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. 
And if you haven't done so already, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching.